Good morning, Gator fans. All right, we won. Let's jump right in and talk about the 45 to 7 victory over Samford. Guys, this has been a long time coming. This is the first Florida Gator football victory in 329 days. Yes, you heard that correctly. Okay, first and foremost, DJ Lagway was great in his first start. Now, yes, it was Samford. Comparing how he looked against Samford to how Graham Mertz looks against tougher Power 5 opponents isn't fair. It's not apples to apples. Excuse me. It's not apples to apples. But I also know what my eyes saw. DJ Lagway was 18 for 25 for 456 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. When we were still in the third quarter, I turned to my husband and I said, man, he has over one third the number of passes over 20 yards at this exact moment than the Gators had all of last season. He finished with a QBR of 264.8. Those numbers by themselves are impressive. But you know what is also impressive? The separation the wide receivers were getting. Since the Graham Mertz era began last year, one of the things that we've consistently talked about on this channel, and I think has generally just been an overall complaint of this offense, is that the wide receivers haven't been able to create any separation. And I think sometimes we've used it as a reason to maybe forgive or look past some of Graham Mertz's play because we've been able to say, well, you know, that offensive line doesn't block for him very well and his receivers are not doing a very good job creating any separation. Had no issues last night. What else stood out is that Lagway didn't take any sacks. He did throw in a triple coverage twice that I remember, and obviously that's something he's going to want to eliminate because those will be picks against SEC opponents. But he by and large played mistake-free football as a freshman in his very first start behind an offensive line who didn't pick up any all-conference players over the last seven days. His ability to make reads and adjust on the fly is something that the Gators have been sorely lacking in recent years. Watching him go through his progressions was a thing of beauty. And I'll tell you this, that is absolutely the prettiest ball that has been thrown in Gainesville since Chris Leak was here. And I'm not sure that it's close. Is there room for improvement for DJ Lagway? Absolutely. And again, I don't think that's a bad thing. This is a freshman starting his very first game. I already mentioned those throws into triple coverage. There were a couple times when he went with like, we can call it the less open receiver. One that stands out to me, he was uh, looking to hit, I believe it was Wilson in the back of the end zone. And he, he threw it to him and it wasn't caught because he was in, I think, double coverage at that point. There was a wide receiver kind of at the intermediate depth, though, that was wide open. And had he hit him, would have been a touchdown. Florida was four of six in the red zone. And obviously, there is no excuse to get into the red zone against a team like Samford and walk away with no points. But one of those was that Jaden Baugh fumble. Um, I'm sure they will get that corrected Obviously not something Lagway has control over, not something Napier has control over. Just needed to do a little bit better job taking care of the football. The second was that baffling call of a direct snap to Treon Webb. DJ uh, Lagway is out at wide receiver, and then they get stuffed short on fourth and one. Why you don't run your, you know, 6'2", 6'3", 240-pound quarterback right there kind of baffling to me. But anyway, that's something that Florida's offense definitely needs to continue to improve on. Zero reason to enter the red zone and leave with no points. And again, I know, Samford. But Florida annually has played at least one cupcake team every season for as far back as I've been alive. And Lagway's numbers still stand out when you compare against all of those games with all of those quarterbacks. And by the way, there's some pretty good guys that have played quarterback during, you know, the last 30 years or so. And Lagway's numbers still stand out. Now, it only gets harder from here, no matter who the starter is for the Florida Gators. 
SEC defensive lines get bigger, tougher, and faster than anything DJ Lagway faced against Stanford. That offense is going to need to continue to improve, right? I do, before we move on to defense, which I definitely want to take a minute to talk about, I do want to also shout out uh, Warner. Really cool moment watching him score a touchdown at the end of the game. This is a kid who came from Yale but is a Winter Park, Florida kid right down the road uh, from Gainesville, about an hour and a half away. And, you know, watching Lagway and Graham Mertz just celebrate with each other for him and then go out and celebrate with him, watch the wide receivers celebrate with him was such a cool moment. And there are so many kids on so many teams across the country that never get their moment when the lights come on, but put in all the work all week long are part of the reason their team is ready to play on Saturdays. So I always, I always love a backup scoring moment. Okay. So let's take a minute and talk about the defense. Florida's defense has recently been giving up 39 points per game dating back to last season. Last night, they allowed the fewest points since the Gators played McNeese last year. Pretty impressive. The Florida Gators forced the Bulldogs to punt every drive of the first half. Also, improvement there from the defense. George Gubbs has been really good for the Gators through two games. He had three tackles for a loss, a sack, and a quarterback hurry to his credit, really looking like he was a great transfer portal pickup. But... The Gators still managed just one turnover. Last season, the Gators recorded only seven the entire season. When I gave some bold predictions going into this season, one of the things that I I said I thought would happen is that I think Florida was going to double their turnover number for this season. Got a ways to go if that's going to become true. UF has now forced two turnovers through two games. I think they were close a few times last night, but they need to continue to finish the job. Jason Marshall Jr. did have the lone turnover. Um, The defense also has multiple after-the-play penalties. This is a discipline issue, right? Florida can't have these penalties. They can hurt you in really tough moments. Obviously, they didn't last night, but they can be the difference between a win and a loss when they happen late in the game against your SEC opponents. Also, shout out to special teams. Second week in a row, special teams looked really good. I think this is the most improved unit, and I don't think it's close. Um, I'm glad during this offseason, Coach Napier and staff took to heart the fact that the special teams unit cost Florida games last year. And they look night and day different than last season, and I think that's a win. Okay, so this is the elephant in the room, right? The giant burning question. Where does Billy Napier go from here? Who does he start? And I think this is where things get really tricky. Because Billy Napier had nine months to evaluate his quarterback options before he named Graham Mertz the starter. He had two choices right here. He can go back to Graham Mertz, who is a guy who's a leader in the locker room and by and large, a really good guy who has earned the respect of his teammates. They like to play with him. They like to play for him. He and Lagway have a great relationship with each other. Um, Or you can admit that your nine months of evaluation were incorrect. And you start DJ Lagway, who only got a shot because Graham Mertz went down. And I just, I don't love when somebody loses a starting job due to something out of their control, like an injury. And if you took the entire summer, the entire spring, and you fair and square won this job, I do take issue with losing it without it being in your control. But DJ Lagway is a better football player than Graham Mertz is. DJ Lagway controlled that offense better than Graham Mertz has shown an ability to do. I think that DJ Lagway is also a vocal leader on this team. I think these players also love to play with him and for him. And I guess what I'm left here wondering is how was this starting job awarded to Graham Mertz over the summer to begin with? It's not like Previous situations where we've had at Florida, I think about Trask and and, um, Franks, and people like to talk about that a lot, and they kind of leave out the details that Trask got hurt 
which is what gave Franks the job. And then it's a lot harder to pull a job from a quarterback who won 10 games, right? If Graham Mertz had won 10 games last year, I don't know that we'd be sitting here having this conversation, but he won five. And at the moment, five feels like an almost unattainable ceiling with Graham Mertz. But I think five is not out of the realm of possibilities with DJ Lagway. DJ Lagway is the future of Florida football. He is the more talented player. And I really do think it's time for Billy Napier to decide that the future starts now. All right, Gators, thanks for tuning in. As always, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. I've got lots of new content coming this week. It is SEC Play. We take on Texas A&M on Saturday. The real meat of the season begins now. Thanks for watching.